What you have just seen are films made by hidden motion picture cameras during actual bank robberies. The cameras were generally turned on by the same switch that activated the silent alarm during the course of the robbery. Because the films were made with a fixed camera and preset exposure and focus, they do not quite meet Hollywood standards. Nevertheless, they have proven to be useful tools for protection against one of the major crimes within FBI jurisdiction. Not only are the armed robberies of financial institutions serious crimes, but even more serious offenses are often associated with them. Assault, kidnapping, or murder of bank employees or bystanders. The situation became so serious that the president signed into law the Bank Protection Act of 1968. This act required various federal regulatory agencies to establish minimum standards for security devices and procedures in the financial institutions under their supervision. These included, among other things, alarm installations, maintenance of traceable bait money in every teller's cash drawer, and tamper-resistant locks. In addition, many banks have installed surveillance motion picture cameras, some results of which you have seen, and hidden still cameras, which provide pictures that can be blown up. Such photographs can be extremely valuable in the investigation of a bank robbery. But the most useful device for the identification and apprehension of bank robbers is still the human eye and the human mind. Properly trained and intelligently used, even under situations of great stress. Again, we will run some films made during actual bank robberies and see what can be learned about what you should or should not do in these situations. Roll film, please. Looking down the muzzle of a gun may interfere with your powers of observation. Yet the identification and apprehension of the robbers must almost certainly depend upon the completeness and accuracy of the description furnished by witnesses who had the best opportunity for observation during the face-to-face -face confrontation. But first-hand observation becomes less valuable the moment it stops being first-hand. With tension relaxed, it's natural for witnesses to explode into speech to compare their widely differing impressions of what actually happened. The longer they talk and the more versions of the robber's appearance and actions are introduced, the more confused each witness' own recollection may become. By the time police officers arrive to begin their investigation, it is almost impossible to sort out individual observation from consensus opinion. Preserving the crime scene after the robbery is just as important as preserving the individual observation made during it. Every bank employee should be trained not to touch any part of the crime scene until law enforcement officers arrive and to protect it from casual passers-by. The marble floor may yield heel prints, which can be photographed and later compared with those of a suspect. The counter of the teller's cage almost certainly retains fingerprints from the ungloved hand of the robber who vaulted it. The description by witnesses and the physical evidence at the crime scene are the two most important elements in bank robbery investigations, the foundation upon which law officers must build their case. What can you do to help them? Let's look at some situations in more detail. First, you can observe closely. The closer the confrontation, the more you should see. To be able to do this under stress, you should make a mental checklist now so that you know what to look for. Physical features like height, build, complexion, hair and eye colors, voice and accent, mannerisms, scars, malformations or other peculiarities, dress, description of the weapon, and hold-up note. The films you have seen should have convinced you how important it is to safeguard your observation. So as soon as possible after the robbery, write down descriptions of the robbers, your recollection of what happened, and every other impression while it's still fresh in your mind. Only in this way can you provide the investigating officer a truly first-hand account without it being distorted by a group discussion. The preservation of physical evidence 
so essential to bank robbery investigations can be summarized in three words. Don't touch anything. Except for ministering to the injured, preserve the crime scene intact for trained investigators. The techniques they use in handling the physical evidence and the laboratory facilities that they have available for its analysis can often provide the information that breaks the case if it reaches them from the crime scene uncontaminated. A hold-up note, like this, left behind by the robber, may provide a host of clues. Latent fingerprints, identification of handwriting, paper, modus operandi from bank hold-up note files. This one actually did lead to the arrest of a bank robber. He was convicted and sentenced to a federal penitentiary. Certainly, there are other useful things you can do to aid law enforcement officers to reduce the increasing toll of bank robberies. Whenever possible, tellers should include properly recorded bait money with the loot. They should also, whenever possible, activate the silent alarm and surveillance systems. And all witnesses should attempt to observe the direction of the robber's escape and the make and license number of his getaway car. But none of these actions should be attempted if they increase the danger to the bank employee or others. What you can always do if you witness a bank robbery is to observe closely, recall accurately, preserve carefully.